Russia has, of course, annexed Crimea. The referendum vote is in. So with that done, I is now turned to Russia's border with the Ukraine. Uh, troops, Russian troops, are surging there. They're uh, engaged in military exercises. But don't worry, uh, Russian officials want you to rest assured they're not planning on invading or anything like that. Uh, we've got some video of U.S. Uh, Defense Department officials. Let's watch. Earlier today, Secretary Hagel spoke by phone with Russian Minister of Defense Sergei Shoigu. Today's conversation obviously focused on the situation in Ukraine. Secretary Hagel was clear and he was firm. He also pressed Minister Shoigu to explain Russian intentions with respect to forces they have aligned near Ukraine's eastern and southern borders. And he reiterated his call that Russia immediately work to de-escalate the tension and to restore Ukrainian territorial integrity. It was a lengthy call, lasting about an hour, and I think it's fair to say that at times it was direct. But Secretary Hagel appreciated Minister Shoigu's time and the minister's assurance that the troops he has arrayed along the border are there to conduct exercises only, that they had no intention of crossing the border into Ukraine, and that they would take no aggressive action. So exercises only. Just a coincidence. They happen to be doing it near the border with Ukraine. Uh, what do you guys think? No, no. When they say exercises, John, do they mean like jumping jacks, calisthenics, <laughs> calisthenics, that I think kind it's of stuff? Actually, squat thrusts. It's oh, a very okay. intimidating gesture. It's just squat thrusts with guns. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I like that Chuck Eagle was was firm. Because that will forestall yeah, the war, of course. It was an hour-long conversation. It exactly. was a lengthy conversation. Yeah, that actually is a pretty... I don't know what they talked about for I like how that he was firm. You know, he was very firm that he wasn't going to invade or do anything militarily. That was really nice that he was firm. Hey, I'm firm that we're not doing shit about this, uh -huh. okay? We're not going to do a thing. Yeah. Is, is that what they're saying, John? Am I the, misinterpreting? Uh, yes, Obama has said... He, I think he used the term, we're not going to engage in, like, a real war. I think he used <laughs> the term real war. Uh, I don't know exactly what the bounds of a real war are. Mm -hmm. When it crosses over into imaginary or anything like that, mm -hmm. um, but so it seems like you're not buying, or you think that us not uh, being, I guess, stronger in our rhetoric with Russia could lead to something. Yeah, I, exactly. Again, what are we going to do? We're going to send. So we're going to do some military exercises this summer with them that were already scheduled. Ukraine. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what? But where? What? What are we supposed to do if he wants to take Crimea? He's going to take it. We're not going to invade him. We're going to do this. Well, the, the Crimea is under, under their control, but the, yeah. the possibility of also moving perhaps into eastern Ukraine. It's a possibility. There are some ethnic Russians living in that area. That's the pretext they used to take over uh, to annex Crimea. So I don't trust anything that the Russians say. I mean, the referendum that took place in. Crimea was not a legitimate referendum, if you ask me. Of course, 60% of the people living there are ethnically Russian, so they had a good chance of winning the referendum anyway. But some people were intimidated from voting. Mm -hmm. um, there were there was Russian military presence there, which of course is going to intimidate people from voting uh, the, the, a way that might potentially piss people off. So there's that. Um, I don't trust Russia, but I do think that the 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 possibility of a full-blown war is stopping them from invading Ukraine further. Um, because th we're, not, we're not talking about a small war. If they continue to annex other parts of Ukraine, we're talking about you know, nuclear options, literally. Come on. I, I, no, think, I, I think it's well, a possibility. I think, look, I think that that's something that both the United States and Russia have in the back of their minds. They don't want it to escalate mm -hmm. to that point because we're talking about the two biggest militaries in the world. Like, they're not going to want it to get to that point. So I think that Russia is a lot smarter and is probably not going to go further because they know what the possibilities are. But do I think they want to annex other parts of Ukraine? Of mm -hmm. course they do. Yeah, I think he's made that clear. I think yeah. Putin has actually talked about that, if not directly, then in sort of around the margins, talking about how he wants to create a new Eurasian uh, Union modeled along the same lines as the European Union. Mm -hmm. And so part of that would be essentially reconstituting the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. taking all those old satellite countries and sort of bringing them back into the fold. Yeah. So as long as they promise they're not going to invade Ukraine, then I guess we can trust them on their promise, yeah. is the idea that Chuck Hale is trying to present. And that just sounds dumb. Yeah, and it is interesting that, that one of the things that I guess sparked this entire chain of events is, is that sparked the protests in Ukraine was that the Ukrainian, the protesters, weren't happy with the uh, the moves that the, the political leadership of Ukraine had made to tie themselves more closely to Russia well, economically. Well, the European Union helped with that. The European Union was pushing it as well for mm -hmm. Ukraine to join up with them. The president, who had originally said that he would do that, would, would tie them more closely with the EU, then started talking to Russia. Russia was considering that $10 billion loan, and that was one of the things they saw him as backing down on his promises to integrate with the EU. 
EU. Right. Um, and with that off the table, it seems like, well, why not a military option? Um, I, I think that it's good that you brought up the fact that obviously Russia, a large number of nuclear weapons, I think that the likelihood of them being used in any conflict with the Ukraine is, is remote, yes, I would say. I know, I know, but let me let me okay. clarify what I meant there, right? I, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that in this particular case, we're not dealing with a small country that has no weapons, that doesn't have any military capability. It's in the Ukraine. Right, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about Russia versus the United States. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm bringing nuclear weapons up is because mm -hmm. both parties want to avoid any type of war because we know what the capabilities are of both countries. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that anyone is going to resort to nuclear weapons, but the possibility of things escalating to yes. that point will at least uh, convince both countries to take more diplomatic actions before going to war. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, President Obama's decision to go forward with sanctions was the right decision. I don't agree with Dick Cheney at all when he says that Obama's being weak with Russia. I think that it's the right way to go. But if the United, uh, I'm sorry, if Russia goes any further, I mean, I think that a military option is possible. And, and I think that that is a scary option mm -hmm. to say the least. Well, why is it our fight? And then that's that's something that that's I've been struggling question. with because you know a lot of this you know to me my first reaction you know from uh, the decades of the Soviet Union and and the the, the uh, propaganda that we've been force fed over the years uh, as Americans that Russia is bad Russia is always bad it's your chief political uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, warmonger. Uh, why are we doing it? Why does it need is, to have our because, response? Why are we NATO's the world's policemen? Oh, well, we're, they're not a member of NATO, but let's say Russia goes into Ukraine and then threatens Germany. Germany is a NATO mm -hmm. member, so then we do have a treaty responsibility yeah. to respond. But when it's Ukraine, do we? Germany's what happens if we I don't? suppose their interest would be in having a buffer like Ukraine. Uh, the, the, having the buffer would be good, obviously. Uh, if you add the, the, the resources economically and militarily of the Ukraine to Russia, that makes them even stronger. They would want to, in any way possible, limit the, the strength of Russia. I imagine those are some potential interests. I, but, I, but I agree with you. I, look, I, I have a sort of knee-jerk emotional reaction that I have no interest in them acquiring any more territory right, whatsoever. But. <laughs> but I don't know why the average U.S. citizen would care much um, and, and I also don't know why, why we would do anything about it. Look, I agree with both of you when it comes to that, but also you can't have that precedent there. And look, don't get me wrong, the United States, we're the biggest hypocrites when it comes to this, right? right. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at what we've done in other countries. We are now you know, the leaders in preemptive war, and, and so we have absolutely no room to talk. But at the same time, you don't want to set a standard where it's acceptable for a country to go into another country and say, hey, you know what, this region includes people that are ethnically the same as us, so yeah. as a result, we're going to annex this region. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do so by, by, by an illegitimate referendum. So uh, that is not a good standard to set. Um, so I can see our interests in getting involved just based on that alone. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, Mitt Romney had a, an op-ed in the New York Times, and he talked about how the president's been weak, and uh, Stick Cheney saying the same thing. I mean, look at all the missed opportunities Barack Obama has had for what? I mean, we're not at war with Iran. We're not at war with North Korea. <laughs> we didn't go into Syria. And now we're not going to go to war with Russia. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. 